Huh, so wait a second, I just talked about this article, but then there's another one from a month ago, or rather in May, by another poster, that Dragon Age could easily address Inquisition's biggest pitfall. So now <laughs> we're looking at the potential for Dragon Age 4 by addressing what was the biggest pitfall of Inquisition. So there's there's all kinds of problems with Inquisition, the story, the gameplay, the pacing, the plots, the characters, the semi-open world concept where not much happens, but there's so much to do and it doesn't impact the main story. There's all kinds of problems. And unfortunately, there's no TLDR, so I can't go through images. I have to actually read this thing with you guys. But, I mean, just do a Google search uh, for people who find problems. There's bugs. That, that's with any game, so that's fine. There's too much to do. All the quests, there's just so much crap of backtracking and, and going back to some, find some golden ring for some dead widow. I just like all this nonsense to, that has no bearing on anything. You want stuff to matter in games and, and pretty much books and stories anyway. Pacing is one of the many storytelling problems. It's sort of a, a symptom. When you, when you feel the story is dragging on too long or things aren't happening in a certain order at a certain pace, that's pacing problems. The major problem is the the villain, the his ineffectiveness. He's always losing to you. The fact that all he wants to do is go to the Fade, and that's what you end up doing to him anyway when you defeat him eventually. It's just a lot of Saturday morning cartoon bullcrap of a villain, which is not scary. And he's meant to look scary and be scary. He's immoral and all this other crap. You're like, uh, he's just not very effective as a villain. Voice acting is interesting. The article points to Cassandra seems to be like they're just reading their lines. A lot of the main character, the male main character lines seem to be out of tone. And some of them are, are overly expressive. So it just, that's, mileage may vary. I mean, every scene is different. There's a, this is, a, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of lines of dialogue. So quite a lot of stuff to cover. So I'll, I'll give him a pass at that. And controls, that's the whole gameplay issue. Um, here, this article says about a lack of focus. I would agree. It's an open world-ish game that just slams a whole bunch of things together. It doesn't refine any of them. And that's kind of what people wanted and expected, just to have a lot of stuff happening. But it's never really refined. You get a forge, but you don't get to actually customize stuff properly. Um, you get a horse, but he's not a very good horse. He doesn't handle very well. It's kind of like looking at The Witcher 3 and going, wow, that's a really refined, big, open, actual open world game. And then going to Dragon Age going, well, this is like a semi-open world with semi-forging, with, with semi this and that. You get people who are commanders of units, but you never get to use those people properly. Like the Iron Bulls Chargers, they don't really, you don't get to do much. They're just there. So the gameplay can be watered down or argue to be watered down. And then there's actual technical problems with the class system in the gameplay. Uh, the warrior class, for example, um, the whole game, whether it's high or low difficulty, is focused on barriers. So there's the shield points generated by tanks and there's the barriers generated by your mages. So if you don't have a tank and a mage in your team or focus on those two, that the game is over. I mean, you can't play. You're going to die because health is, is a commodity. You only get a limited number of health potions. So the concept of the charging bull technique, uh, people just fly off cliffs and Solus's barrier, which you use in the beginning of the game, he ends up using on lowest health party members, even if there's a, your tank is being beaten by five dudes right in front of them. So yeah, the AI is a problem as well. And we can talk about the warrior techniques like the, the grappling hook where you want to bring a unit closer to you. It doesn't always work, if at all, or you want to go closer to a unit. It doesn't always work. This was a problem solved in Knights of the Old Republic and they couldn't get it figured out, you know, the, the seventh time. I don't know how many games they went through to get the Dragon Age Inquisition. Anyway, let's see what the article has to say. Dragon Age Inquisition was an amazing game. It got great reviews and deservedly so, but no game is perfect. And if Inquisition could only get its absolute biggest flaw addressed, there's one that comes to mind, the maps that never end, namely the hinterlands. 
That's an interesting argument to make. The previous problem with Dragon Age 2 was the maps were recycled and they weren't unique. So Bioware takes that wonderful argument or that wonderful feedback going, huh, so they don't like recycled environments. Yeah, no crap. So they do overkill, as always, which is the the Bioware response to any criticism. We'll just say, okay, we'll give them the exact opposite, do gigantic maps, which aren't technically open world because we can't do that yet. We don't know how. And we're just going to give you this giant world to explore. And that happened to be the first level, I believe, or the first main level of the game, the Hinterlands, which just keeps going on and on with all these quests and all these things to do. Which arguably is a problem, but it's not a major problem. They, they just, hey, Bioware, don't do crazy big crap anymore. Do more succinct, smaller levels. Shouldn't be a problem. And if you're going to have a big level, have us, give us a way to navigate it in it. With Andromeda, you got that crazy fast dune buggy. That was a solution. It may not be the best solution, but it was a solution. With Bioware, they create a, they solve a problem by by generating twenty more problems. So, all in all, players began t- talking about how nearly each and every one of them had lost too many hours of their lives. Essentially, a sixty-hour game, which is really only a twenty twenty-five hour game, in the main story to the hinterlands upon playing acquisition in a way that really throws a wrench in the flow of the game's plot. So this is a pacing issue that we saw here. Uh, the levels are so big, there's so much to do, and they don't feel good. They don't feel like you've accomplished anything because of the size and scope of the level and the, the sub-quests that have nothing to do with anything. Then there's the fact that some areas of the hinterlands are too high level for players first arriving, which does even more to trap them into level grinding until they can handle it, which has you being, going back to the hinterlands to finish up on future quests. So there's even more quests outside of the quests already present in the first part of the game. So the, I don't know why they brought up the bears. This was an idea from marketing where that the bears the, or, or creatures in general will have progeny and there'll be like families of these creatures you have to cull the herd and it never happened of course they just get respawned anyway so yes they're a bit stronger to fight but that's that's one of a minor there's all the other stronger creatures in the game like the dragons and what have you so that's not a huge problem but uh yes the hinterlands was big and overblown and they focused too much on this one level had some of the truly most truly interesting and diverse maps to explore. Yes, it was very big. They did a good job making big, gorgeous maps. But to what end? After all, it was a brilliant. T- it was a brilliant title. I don't know. <laughs> it's a, arguably not so much. But a couple of later maps unfortunately followed the Hinterlands lead, the Hissing Waste and the Frostback Basin. The, his, the Hissing Waste were essentially one big endless desert. Yes, it was. That was, ugh. The Frostback ba- Basin was interesting. It's exceedingly beautiful. But once again, it just feels unnecessarily large. Exactly. Works okay if you got a really cool car to fly around in your spaceship to explore a giant galaxy. Not so much when you're walking around. Why Bioware would want to make a new DLC, Hinterlands-esque area is a mystery, but that's what the Frostback Basin is. Yay. Potential solutions. Bioware can't make another similar map in Dragon Age 4 and expect things to be different because the company already tried to fix fans' experiences with Hinterlands without making any changes. Tweeted out around the time of the game's release that players could leave their Hinterlands, but that didn't really help anything. (laughs) You could... But yeah, you have to walk through it eventually. Bioware could consider going more completely open world. Oh boy. Okay, so here here are the, the bloggers like, you know, the Hinterlands was so big, what they really should do is make the whole game open world. It's like, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> that's that's not even solving a problem. That's just making the problem worse. Um not putting walls around the player. I mean, they have to when you're talking about where even open world maps have walls. So that's just part of level design. 
So they came close with open world, but I don't know if that's the solution. It's not a, it's not a, it's not really, whether you do semi open world or open world, just make the the maps more useful, believable, and have stuff that makes sense. Have stuff that has value. That's all you gotta do. You can make the world as big as you want. It's not gonna matter if the stuff you have to do in it is boring and pointless. The whole problem was completionists getting wrapped up in many things to go. So this is the, the mentality of you have completion. There's there's the four mentalities in, in the game design concept. So you have people who like completionists who just want to do everything. You have hunters who want to kill everything. Um, you have pacifists. There's, there's all these mentalities. So that's fine. You can, you can structure a game to one of those mentalities or style of gamer. But that's difficult for Bioware because they want to get as many gamers as they want. They want to have a game that encompasses all those elements and that's going to be difficult. So standards are fairly high. After Inquisition and Andromeda and Anthem, no kidding, expectations are going to be, well, <laughs> expectations aren't high, but uh, standards are very high because what we've seen from Bioware in these past this past decade really hasn't been anything special visually gameplay wise storytelling wise it's been somewhat of a disappointment so dragon age has always been at least from the first game a well told story with characters that we can understand and appreciate in comparison to some of their other titles so i don't think map size is inquisition's biggest pitfall it's more of a game design flaw and if they just focus on choices mattering, like we talked about in the previous video, you're going to have a game design that follows that as the main principle. And everything else will neatly fall into place, like in nature, in the hinterlands. It doesn't have to be that big, guys. <laughs> okay. Thanks for listening. Have yourself a great day.